Hey everyone, in this one we're going to talk about panic attacks and panic disorder. We're going to talk about what a panic attack is and how to diagnose panic disorder. So panic attacks are very common. It is estimated that the lifetime prevalence of panic attacks affects up to a third of the general population at some point in their lives. So a third of the population at some point in their lives has a panic attack. Now with panic disorder, the lifetime prevalence is estimated to be about 4.7% of the general population. With regards to differences between females and males, it appears that females suffer from panic disorder more than males, about 2 to 3 to 1. And the onset of panic disorder typically occurs in early to mid-20s, Median age is about 24, and there is a familial connection. And the prevalence appears to decrease after the age of 60. So how do we diagnose panic attacks and panic disorder? According to the DSM-5, we have to define what a panic attack is first. So a panic attack is an abrupt surge of intense fear or intense discomfort that reaches a peak within minutes. So a panic attack is abrupt, intense fear, or intense discomfort that reaches a peak within minutes. And during that time of the panic attack, four or more of the following symptoms occur. And we'll go through the list of symptoms. Those symptoms are one, sweating, trembling or shaking, Unsteadiness, feeling dizzy. Depersonalization, which is being detached from oneself. Or derealization, which is feelings of unreality. Heart palpitations, accelerated heart rate or pounding heart. Nausea or abdominal distress. Paresthesias, which are tingling sensations. Shortness of breath. Fear of dying. Fear of losing control or going crazy. Chest pain or discomfort. Chills or heat sensations. And feelings of choking. So, a panic attack is an abrupt surge of intense fear or int intense discomfort that reaches a peak within minutes. And it has at least four of those following symptoms. So, it's a lot of different symptoms you have to go through in order to define whether something is a panic attack or not. And with panic disorder, panic disorder is recurrent unexpected panic attacks. That's the A criteria for panic disorder. Now the B criteria is the amount of time required for the disorder. With panic disorder, the B criteria is one month or more of anxiety about panic attacks. That's very important. It's one month or more of Basically, fear about having panic attacks or anxiety about having it and, uh, panic attacks. And at least one of the attacks has been followed by one or both of the following. A persistent concern or worry about additional panic attacks or their consequences. Or a significant maladaptive change in behavior related to the attack. So at least one month or more anxiety about panic attacks individuals have a persistent concern or worry about additional panic attacks or the, their consequences. And there's a significant maladaptive change in behavior, so they change the way they function in their day-to-day -day lives because of an anxiety about panic attacks. The C criteria of panic disorder is that the disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or another medical condition. So this is the exclusion criteria. So cannot have any exclusion criteria. And the diagnosis of panic disorder is like a diagnosis of exclusion. It is not better explained by another medical or another mental disorder. So if there's something that better explains these symptoms, another mental disorder that better explains, then it cannot be panic disorder. But if there are no other mental disorders that explain the uh, disturbance better, then it is panic disorder. 
So how do we come up with an easy way to remember the symptoms to ask about, to ask a patient about, and how do we remember how to diagnose panic disorder? Well, again, a panic attack is that abrupt surge of intense fear with at least four or more of those symptoms we talked about. How do you remember those symptoms? Well, there's an easy way to remember those symptoms. It's using the mnemonic device, students fear the three C's. So if we look at each of those letters, so S in the students stands for sweating, T for trembling, U for unsteadiness, D for depersonalization or derealization, E for excessive heart rate, N for nausea, T for tingling, S for shortness of breath. And then the fear is fear of dying, losing control, or going crazy. And the three C's are chest pain, chills, and choking. So when we ask a patient to determine if they actually have had a panic attack, we ask these criteria. Students fear the three C's. So sweating, trembling, unsteadiness, depersonalization, derealization, excessive heart rate, nausea, tingling, shortness of breath, fear of dying, losing control, or going crazy, and the three C's, chest pain, chills, and choking. And if they have four or more of the following, or four or more of those symptoms, that is considered a panic attack. And with panic disorder, remember that it is at least a month of anxiety about having panic attacks. And they also have recurrent unprovoked or unexpected panic attacks. Again, one month or more of anxiety about panic attacks. That's the B criteria. Those are the A criteria. And once we have that, we can confidently say once we have excluded any other medical conditions or any other mental disorders, that is panic disorder. Now, panic disorder and panic attacks follow a particular pattern. There's usually a situational trigger. So when someone is exposed to a certain situation, they can experience a panic attack. That panic attack and that experience the individual gets while having the panic attack can be associated with that situation. And what happens is that association with that situation can generalize to other situations. And once they have that generalization to other situations, that's when it becomes very difficult. That's when it becomes very problematic because other situations that seemingly are unrelated can now be a trigger for even more panic attacks. So it's a vicious cycle of triggers, panic attacks, associations, and then generalizations leading back to more triggers. And that is where the problem lies. So when we've made the diagnosis of panic disorder, how do we treat it? The treatment can be psychological. There are psychological treatments. For one, there is cognitive behavioral therapy. Specifically with panic disorder, we use interoceptive exposure. Interoceptive exposure is basically eliciting a panic attack and its symptoms and getting the individual to learn to tolerate those symptoms without coping strategies. There's also cognitive restructuring. Cognitive restructuring is basically addressing underlying beliefs regarding the panic attacks. And third is using a variety of different relaxation techniques. These are just very broad strokes I'm going over, but uh, interoceptive exposure is generally more specific for panic disorder. Now, some of the pharmacological treatments for panic disorder include the SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, such as fluoxetine, citalopram, paroxetine, fluvoxamine, and sertraline. Or an SNRI, uh, a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor like venlafaxine or Effexor. And what we do with panic disorder and other anxiety disorders is that we start low and go slow because these patients can experience side effects that may actually exacerbate 
their ang- uh, symptoms of anxiety. And with panic disorder, and usually with other uh, anxiety disorders as well, pharmacological treatments um, with SSRIs may require higher doses. So we normally need higher doses of SSRIs than uh, usually used in depression. So we need higher doses and we need to have them treated for longer periods of time. Usually a full response may take up to 12 weeks. And what we usually want to do is we want to treat for up to one year after symptoms resolve and avoid relapse. And we typically want to avoid the use of bupropion or uh, TCAs due to their stimulating effects, which may exacerbate the subjective feeling of anxiety in these patients. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on panic attacks and panic disorder. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.